Maryam Tracia of Putanjara. From her childhood had three companions. They went to church together, collected flowers and decorated the church. These teens visited the sick at home, cleansed, bathed and washed their clothes. The three begged for food and medicine from other families and cared the people of their hometown Putanjara in the leadership of young Tracia. Maryam Tracia, gifted with the knowledge of hearts, looked into the spiritual welfare of persons beyond their temporal and physical needs. She could recognize at sight those who were slaves of sin and urged them lovingly to abandon their sinful ways. Her history contains several instances of conversion of sinners affected through the prayer and penance of Mother Maryam Tracia. In fact, it was often at the cost of severe penances and sacrifices that she obtained such conversions. She knelt before the blessed sacrament pleading for mercy when people thronged to make their confession on first Fridays. She would pray for them in order that they might make a good confession. Maryam Tracia once wrote to her spiritual father, "It would be very useful if you preached a sermon on the evils of men. The Lord says so." In recognizing the spiritual needs of people, especially those who led sinful lives, Maryam Tracia gave wise counsels and guided those who sought her advice. For even as a young lay woman, she was living the life of a religious. Once she was on her way to her mother's house, walking along the road to Chalakudi by herself. A man came down from the roadside house, came up to her asking to visit a person who was bedridden in his house suffering from a deadly tumor. The patient was on the point of death and had received the last sacraments. She began to excuse herself. Then the patient's mother came running and crying, "I have only one daughter and she is going to die. Please come and pray for her." She yielded to their insistence and visited the sick girl. Together with the family, she recited a full rosary followed by the litany of all saints. She begged God to cure the sick girl. Suddenly, the intense pain relented and the sickness was gradually healed. On another instance, a little girl named Tracia, while just able to sit up and play, she had tumbled down and hurt herself. Since then, the child could not open her mouth. The girl at the age of 20 still could not receive the holy communion tracia felt pity for the girl and prayed to god to give her any pain or suffering for the girl's sake at midnight her own body was wholly paralyzed in the left side needing three people to assist her on the 14th day as a result of such prayer and sacrifice and by the special grace of god tracia was able to receive holy communion at the age of 22 in her girlhood while she moved with her compassionate activities often she was thrashed with humiliations disapprovals and censures she entered families of rich and low alike to offer care for the suffering and dying she tended the destitute assisted the uncared elderly and orphans she nursed those who affected by contagious diseases like smallpox she toiled to kindle the light of knowledge for girl children and to impart god to the people of her society She had to face severe criticism for crossing the boundaries set for women in the male chauvinistic society. Though rumors went in flames, but no one dared to stop her in her active ministries.